Hi everybody, welcome back to our um, fourth workshop um, in our roof series. It's great to have you here today. Um, if you want to, you can like and subscribe our YouTube to our YouTube channel so that you can hear more about what's happening next year. But um, for now, just welcome. It's so wonderful to be together, to be able to spend this time in God's word and to just reflect on all that he is doing. It's been an incredible time, hasn't it? I just realized I haven't got my Bible ready. If you haven't got your Bible ready, now's your time to go and grab it. So we're in Ruth chapter four, or if that helps you more, you can be in um, Matthew chapter one. If you don't have four pages for your four chapters of Ruth, you can do that too. So that gives you a few options. So I hope you've got your cup of tea and your Bible and we'll get into it, shall we? So hopefully you've all spent some time reading that last chapter of Ruth or maybe listening to me and you will have seen that happily ever after ending. It's just beautiful, isn't it? It seems um, like God should have just um, stamped that over the bottom of it. Happily ever after. Um, because this story's got that fairy tale quality, it has, not it? There's a disaster and death at the start, and it concludes with a marriage and the birth of a baby. Only Ruth didn't have a wicked stepmother, but she had a wonderful mother-in-law. I love a fairy tale. <laughs> I especially love the retelling of Cinderella in the film Ever After. I actually even based my wedding plan and <laughs> based on that movie and used the music and to walk down the aisle. Daniela, the character who plays the Cinderella character, has this inner strength and determination which is just so compelling and fairly unusual for a Cinderella kind of character. She's able to retain onto her hope and emerge from the suffering, suffering that she's um, seen because of her relationship with her stepmother and the loss of her dad. She enters the ball at the end in this huge pair of beautiful wings as she learns to fly and be herself and all that she's supposed to be but she still has to fight to get the prince to believe in her, to trust her side of the story. He doesn't just place his trust in her, she has to fight for it. But that isn't the case, is it, as we read Ruth. We see here how Boaz always believed in her and always from the start his love began to grow because of her tr his trust in her and in her character. I think we hit a really significant moment in the chapter as we reach verse 9 to 12. Boaz has just secured um, Naomi's land, which happens to come with Ruth and Naomi as well. So then Boaz announced to the elders of all the people, Today you are witnesses that I have brought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion and Marlon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabite S. Marlon's widow as my wife in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from the town records today you are witnesses then the elders and all those at the gate said we are witnesses may the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah who came together to build up the house of Israel may you have standing in somewhere I can't say <laughs> and be famous in Bethlehem through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman may your family be like like that of Perez who Tamar bore to Judea what a prayer to pray over them at their start of their life together it is simply incredible the way Boaz trusted God and trusted Ruth all the way through this is beautiful we see Boaz's redemptive love at work a love that rescues a love that believes in Ruth that echoes through the generations as we look to Jesus at this Christmas time we can see compelling evidence that Joseph also had that kind of redemptive love as he looked towards Mary 
If he had abandoned Mary instead of redeeming her by marriage, she would have been stoned to death. But instead, Joseph's redemptive love went to work. A love that rescues, a love that believed in Mary and trusted God. Two men whose small acts of faith in choosing brides that needed restoring changed the course of history. God's love is a love that rescues us. It's where we can place our trust. It is what continues on from those stories that we believe in the Bible and stays with us even today. That same love that was with Boaz and Ruth, that was with Mary and Joseph, is with us today, redeeming us and restoring us as God believes in us. It's where we are held in the palm of his hand. His re redemptive love holds us this Christmas, even in suffering, even with coronavirus, even with darkness seeming all around. God's love rescues us. As you spend some time reflecting on your own story and God's love at work in your own lives, I invite you to just spend some time listening to my mum's story and how God's love held her. A love that rescues, redeems and believes. My name's Ursula and I'm um, Leanne's mum. She's asked me to share some of my story with you today. I picked my story up about 10 years ago. Life was bobbing along. Adrian and I were in a season of calm. Our children were married, no grandchildren yet, and just chickens to be concerned about on a daily basis. I worked at the renal dialysis unit three days a week and loved it. For a while I'd been monitored for high blood pressure and one day Adrian and I went along to see my GP. He knew me pretty well, as doctors did back then, and he knew I worked at the renal unit and was concerned about the news he had to give me. Basically, my kidney function was failing, and he needed to refer me to the consultants at the hospital, the very ones I worked with. I took a letter to my consultant who was like, is this about you? And I said, yes. And he said, oh, don't worry, we can get the tests done, we get lots of these letters. So I went for some tests and basically on the last test of the scan, the signographer told me that I had polycystic kidneys and she blew me away because I had no idea and I had to go back to the renal unit and was in floods of tears because basically she'd just changed my life forever. Obviously I had to go to clinic a lot and as things deteriorated I had to go a lot more and mentally working at the renal unit became really difficult so I decided that I should hand in my resignation which was really heartbreaking because I really loved that job. Basically we'd been told that we need to go on the transplant list and having had to fill in this consent form with horrendous questions on it. Adrian decided that actually the best result would be if he gave me a kidney. So I was quite blown away by that because he's always hated all things medical and the idea of him having major surgery for me to be well was a bit too much. And I was like, no, you can't do that. But because we've had children together, that means that I have antibodies against him and would reject his kidney. That's then when we were told about a paired scheme. He would give a kidney to somebody whose partner would give me a kidney. We both, we all have to match. So that we went and met the professors in Cambridge and you go into a pool of people all in the same situation and then we had to wait to hear when a match came up. It was a very difficult time physically, mentally and spiritually because I really did think that God would be glorified in my healing. You know, we read about healing in the Bible and I was kind of, okay, this is okay because I'm going to be healed and that's going to be awesome. Yeah, it was hard and it was 
confusing and lonely at times. Our transplant actually happened February 2017. Listening to worship songs in this time was amazingly uplifting and strengthening. It would bring me closer to God and I could recognise it wasn't about me, life is all about Him. So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart, it's falling into place. I'm on the throne. Stop holding on and just be held. If you are going through a hard time this Christmas, I would say just look to Jesus, look to him and hand it over and let him hold you and he will. We won't understand necessarily, but just give it over and put it at the cross and he'll he'll be there and he'll take it away for you. So we've been on this journey with Ruth, haven't we? Through themes of recurring hope, looking at her blessed obedience, her godly character. And now we have this topic of redemptive love. Now this is the kind of love we see from Father God time and time again in our life. lives. We talked about God's love covering us and God being a covering for us in protection and in love. And so as we look at this theme one more time, I just want you to have a moment to reflect and pause. When you first came to know Christ, was his redemption speaking over a particular part of your story? Think back to when you first came to know him. Where were you? What part of your life story were you in? Was God's redemptive love playing a part there? And is that different today or is it the same? As his love has washed over and healed those past, past hurts, how does that sit in your life today? How does that work for you now? His redemptive love keeps coming in, keeps offering that healing, that rescue for you where you stand, just as it did for Ruth, just as it did for Mary, just as it does for my mum and me. That redemptive love holds you and has a purpose for you right now, this Christmas as well. So just come to him now. Let's just pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Open your hands out to him. To receive his love again this Christmas. Come, Holy Spirit. To redeem and to rescue. guard and protect. Father, as we come to our Bibles now, to create memories of this special time with you this morning or this evening, we just pray that you'll continue to meet with us, that you'll speak to our hearts and guide us in this time. Help us to remember the things that we've learned and never forget them. In Jesus' name. Amen. So it's time to get our Bibles out and get journaling. Um, so I have four pages for all of the different chapters of Ruth. So I've got another clean page to work with here. But you can journal in Matthew 1 or create a tip in however you feel led. So um, I've been going through my devotional workbook and just looking back about at what pages we've created so far and thinking how I'm going to work on the back of this new page. Now, the page before has watercolour on, so normally I advise <laughs> don't do watercolour on the back of watercolour because um, you can reactivate the watercolours on the back of the page with the water and um, cause them to lift off. But I am going to risk it today, partly because of the brand of paints I'm using. My Kiritaki 
colours I tan be paints are really highly pigmented so I can use them without adding too much water at all and I'm also going to make sure I really regularly dry my page today so that's um, if you do want to use um, watercolour on the back of a watercolour page in your bible I highly recommend you testing your own paints to see um, whether they lift off and um, how absorbent your paper is to see um, whether that causes you any problems. So I wanted to focus on the idea of Boaz and Joseph's stories coming together and linking those images that we think of at Christmas with this idea of being rescued. So I had a picture um, as I was waking up the other morning of a, um, a life ring, a rescue ring, um, as a Christmas bauble hanging on a tree. So that is what I'm going to create on my Bible page today. So I've just drawn around a, a candle and then I'm creating the inner circle. I didn't have anything quite the right size, not even a 2P piece was lying around. <laughs> so I just freehand um, the inner circle. And then I'm just gonna um, mark out where I want some Christmas tree branches to go. So I've chosen um, two different shades of green paint it's always better to work in different shades to um, build up those contrasts and um, to make an image seem more real really so the colour doesn't lay too flat. So I choose my greens and then I'm going to mark out where I want the Christmas tree branches to go on this page after I've woken up my paints. So um, I always aim to, I don't always succeed, but to, wait, to apply some water to my paints and just give them a few minutes just to wake up before I start using them. The colour comes together so much better like that. And then I'm just marking single lines in different directions, thinking of that kind of the way that a Christmas tree branches crisscross and come out and how the tree will be narrower at the top and wider at the bottom of my page and how it's going to um, be behind the um, life ring bauble that I'm painting. So I just mark those lines out and then I use one colour of the green paint at a time and just start from the line each time and do small strokes, pressing down and then lifting up my brush so that I can get a finer tip to each of those needles on the edge of my fir tree. So. I do it quite quickly and um, you can really mix up the direction that you're painting them in. Often when I'm doing my first layer of paint I'll paint them all in the same direction and then when I go back and add a different shade later I will um, put a few more um, other random directions because fair needles don't always go in exactly the same direction. So I'm just um, repeating this process over and over again. Watch this bit carefully because I'm afraid my phone decided to delete half of um, this video of me showing you how to do this. So um, it will jump forward in a minute. But I just really um, gently, you can see I haven't got too much water on that page so it's not going to be um, making the page underneath it really wet and heavy with water. And I'm just going through washing my brush, drying my brush, applying more paint, um, marking out where I want the branch to go and then going back in with those needles. I press down and lift up to get that kind of flick of the pine needle and get the end of each needle thinner than the rest. And I just do that over and over again with this olivey green colour and then I go back in with the darker shade to um, fill out and give a bit more um, fullness for this tree image that I'm painting. It doesn't take too long once you get in a ribbon for it, um, but it can take a bit of practice to get it looking how you want. So um, painting Christmas trees seems to be the theme for my Christmas this year. Um, my Christmas trees have got this kind of design on them. So I've been doing this a lot, but if you haven't, um, Feel free to have a practice of this kind of um, image on a scrap piece of paper before you start if you fancy giving this a try. Just to pr practice that motion of, of pressing down and lifting up your paintbrush. So there we go, we've got um, 
the pine needles all painted in. You can see that I've left um, gaps around where I want this life ring to be painted and now I'm going to go in with this lovely deep burgundy which is the same colour that I've been using all the way through this roof series um, to create this life ring ball ball. Um, again I'm trying to not get it too wet so I'm painting quite um, heavily pigmented paint on my very first layer. Normally with watercolours you gradually try and build it up but because I don't want to keep um, applying more water and paint to this page so it doesn't bleed through I'm painting quite thickly on this first layer so I get instant impact but as you can see these paints are really ever so pigmented but all through the Christmas tree I've had no problems with bleed through and I've kept checking on the back of my page just to make sure we're all okay and there's been no problems and there is no problems <laughs> even now I'm recording this voiceover I look back and my Bible page underneath still looks perfectly the same so I'm just using this gold paint just to paint the top of the bauble where it attaches onto the tree um, trying to get those bumpy kind of lines across the bottom and then that little loop for the um, string to go through at the top and again drying off that's the secret to working on the back of a watercolour page. Keep drying it, don't let anything get too wet. You can see everything's looking fine underneath. We get away with it. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, write on this um, life ring, love that rescues. Because that's what I think sums up this idea of a redemptive love. A love that rescues. Boaz love rescued Ruth. Joseph's love rescued Mary and God's love rescues us time and time and time again and so just to give this page a little bit more dimension I'm just using some of the die cuts from the kit just to um, link together the st two stories really so we've got all these images of wheat and and um, berries and things that we've been using throughout our study on reef things that kind of point to everything and the environment that they were going on and then linking it into Christmas and everything that's going on for us right now. So I just go through with my glue pen and um, apply the glue to the back of all these different elements before um, adhering them onto the page. I find that it's always best to um, put some pressure on for a good few minutes when you um, stick something down and if you do for any reason go um, back in with a heat tool when you've um, got elements that are glued onto the page always go back afterwards and just press it down again because the heat tool tends to um, reactivate the glue and it goes um, wet and sticky again and things can lift off your page so if that happens just go back through and press them down and if necessary you can always um, add a bit of glue behind um, those die cuts again it's easy to just add a little bit extra on, especially with one of these pens. But you can also um, lift the whole things off and it won't damage your page and glue it all again, it'll be fine. So that's all I'm doing, I'm adding these um, little um, die cuts to the page and just thinking about all the things that God's brought me through and the way in which I can trust him with this next part of the journey. As we face an uncertain Christmas, as the vaccines rolled out but and change is coming again, we can just reflect on this love that never changes. This love that is constant all the way back to Ruth and Boaz and even before that. And then linking to our beloved Saviour Jesus and his family and the way that he was brought up all the way through into our story now how God is loving us and redeeming us and rescuing us so I'm writing love that redeems across the bottom but I spell it wrong so <laughs> I um, paint over it and um, write it again in gold pen because obviously gold pen's better than black pen anyway <laughs> But mistakes are okay, there's always a way of res rescuing a mistake, maybe that's something else to learn. God even redeems us when we make mistakes. I think so often that's the part of God's love that we 
and don't want to accept when we know that we are the one who have made a mistake. Um, we find it much harder to receive that redemption from God and to trust in that rescue. But God redeems us and rescues us even when we've made mistakes. It isn't just when life circumstances don't go the way that we hope that they will. Because God's love believes in you. He created you, he designed you, he loves you. And we're gonna look at those themes a bit more next year as we go into our more than a smile study together and we look at God's joy. Um, but I'm not gonna give you too many previews of that for that, but you can um, start seeing those events coming onto our Facebook page. You can chat, sign up through Church Suite um, and you can also buy the new devotional kit from the Etsy shop. So there's lots and lots going on. So I'm just tidying up and finishing off this page. God's love is a love that believes in you. It is a love that rescues you. And it is a love that redeems you. Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you that it goes through all of time and is here with us now. Just as it was with Ruth and Boaz, as it was with Mary and Joseph. We love you, Lord, and we just pray that we will um, continue to learn from you as we study your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you're coming to the workshop today, I'll see you on Zoom shortly. Um, make sure that you've popped a hello in the comments so I know you're around, and I'll see you really soon. God bless.